How to back in the building. What up, what up, y'all? It's been a busy day today. You know what I mean? I had to go out, take the kids shopping. Hold on, man. Let me fix my shirt right here. I can't be looking like a poop putt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right? Hey, man. Like I just got in a rumble or something. I was just telling y'all that I've been out trying to get these kids clothes. I'm broke, baby. I ain't got no money. Man, today we got some exciting, exciting updates and insights from the Eagles training camp. Look, let's dive right into it. Look, man, this right here for the G's and the OG's, but you already know what to do. But if you're new to the channel and you like content like this, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to like, I need you to comment. I need you to subscribe. I need you to share this. I need you to hit that notification bell. You know what I mean? So you're always up to date. Look, man, I want to talk about something because this was really important to me. You know, when Coach Vic Fangio mentioned, you know, starting a rookie, if he's a better option, I couldn't help but think that he was referring to Quinion Mitchell. I, I'm all for playing the best guys. I think if you looked at my history when we've had rookies, we've played them. And um, provided they're good enough. We ain't playing somebody just because they're young. You know, if we were an expansion team like I was in two places, we might just throw them out there to see what we got. But, I don't, you know, we, we got more serious business here. So if they're worthy of playing, they will play. You know, this kid has been making waves in camp already. You know, he's been um, guarding these really good receivers like A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith already. You know, I would like to see him on the field as early as possible. And, you know, he has been getting some rotations with the ones. So I'm super excited to see where, you know, he end up. I would like to see him in a slot. It's been the news that he's been in a slot as well. So look, man, Quinya Mitchell is one of those guys. I like Vic Fangio because he's definitely ready to put the best player on the field, no matter where they start out on the roster. You know what I mean? Or the depth charts, as I should say. The Philadelphia Eagles are just had their first week of training camp. Unpadded, in shorts, in, in tees, I know. But look, man, we've been looking good. I want to talk about that. It's a few things I definitely want to bring up. For one, I want to talk about my dog, Jalen Hurts, because he's been getting the most slander this season. I mean, this offseason, excuse me, from all of the pundits. Everybody's saying they don't think Jalen Hurts is going to be that good. And like I just said, I know already it's just T and shorts. But Jalen Hurts is primed up to have an all-pro season. Again, look, the sky's the limit for Jalen Hurts. He looks better. His throwing motion has improved. He's been improving every year. You know what I mean? And that's what I like. Um, he had some really big throws this week. I mean, he's been lights out surgical all week, you know, completing almost every pass. You know, like I said, um, this, this is Jalen Hurts. This is what he do every training camp. And I already know, I know you're going to say, well, the Philadelphia Eagles don't let nobody into their training camp. It is what it is. We go off what we see. We know Jalen Hurts is good. We know this team is stacked and ready for success. We know that. But Jalen Hurts, man, he, he had a big, huge throw to um, Devontae Smith, or should I say throws, plethora of throws. It was all good for Jalen Hurts. Devontae Smith, these both of these guys have grabbed another gear in their development. And that's what I like. That's why I'm so hyped up about it, man. We really got to talk about it. You know, he has been... You know, nothing short of spectacular, man, for this first week of camp. Um... This could be an amazing season for him, man. All the skeptics have been talking crazy about Jalen, but I believe, I said it already, man, he's due for an all-pro year. You know, reports are saying that he's been beating the blitz, you know, something that we struggled with last season. I think that was one of the reasons why the Philadelphia Eagles um, lost a lot late in the season because we couldn't do nothing to combat the blitz. And if you can't combat the blitz, man, it's a wrap. And he's been leading these young guys. You know, he's been a leader. Um, he's been working with the receivers, trying to trying to build that cohesion. You know, I think I don't think that he got to do that uh, a lot in the past. But this year he's making it a priority, you know, working out with players like Ania Smith, Johnny, Johnny Wilson. You know, he's he's out there. He's doing it. And also I want to talk about Paris Campbell, man. 
Paris Campbell has been making a case for himself. Let's keep it a stack, man. He's he's been making a case. Like he's been having some really big catches all through the offseason, already in training camp. He's a, I think he had a really big um catch on Slay. Really good ball from from uh Jalen Hurts. Like this these are the things that we want to see right now. You know what I mean? And on the defensive side, everything is looking good as well. You know, if I gotta if I gotta bring up somebody who I'm really excited to see, it's definitely Jalen Carter. He's at home. Jalen Carter is extremely strong, man. He's getting better and better. He's getting faster, you know, and the game is starting to slow down for him. You know, so I, I definitely can't wait to see, you know, how Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis look going on to, into week two of training camp. Because I'm pretty sure the pads is going to be going on maybe Tuesday. If I had to guess, it'd be Tuesday, you know, before we see some pads. And now we can really start to talk about what we see because it's a, it's a totally different game from when you just in, in shorts and, and T-shirts to when you're in the pads. Who's going to hold it down at the safety position? You know, Vic Fangio said in a few reports that, you know, he's pumping the brakes on James Bradbury getting pushed to safety. Drop y'all thoughts in the comment. Let me know how y'all feel on what we're going to do with James Bradbury. Everybody already know, if you haven't, James Bradbury finally addressed the media this week. And in my opinion, I feel like James Bradbury uh, was real professional about what he said. He took accountability for his play last year. You know, that definitely moved him a couple clicks up, up in my book because, you know, accountability to me is everything. Noticing what you got to do to get better. He even said that, you know, he did hold in the Super Bowl. He said that before. He said it again in his presser. And he's holding up to... You know how bad he was last season, and he he said it was his idea. This is the part that kind of blew my mind. He said it was his idea to move to safety because he's seen what the Eagles was doing. We was they was bringing in um, as they brought in Isaiah Rogers. They drafted Quinion Mitchell. They drafted Cooper DeGene. He's seen that the Philadelphia Eagles was stocking up for the future. Like, you know, because we, we don't know how long Slay going to be with the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm thinking this might be, a, might be Slay's last year. You know what I mean? So what's happening right now is he basically manned up and said, look, I didn't play well. I don't deserve that position. So if you're going to give it to somebody else, what can I do to at least get on the field? And, you know, y'all let me know what y'all think we should do with this. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, James Bradbury is one of the highest paid players on our roster. Right. So I know it's like, all right, well, what do you why, why should we keep James Bradbury if he's not going to start? But if we can't find a suitor for James Bradbury, um, we got to pay him anyway. So the only way to offload some of that contract is to trade him. So if we can't do that now, we got to think about something. You know, what do we do with James Bradbury? Because we got to pay him anyway. Should we keep him on a roster as, as a rotational piece, you know, until next season? Or, you know, should we, will the Philadelphia Eagles try to big him up so somebody could trade for him? You know, because it's been like two or three teams that already had catastrophic injuries when it comes to cornerback. I'm talking about season-ending injuries, and I think one of those teams are the Rams. So, you know, what are we going to do with James Bradbury? He was an all-pro corner. We can't forget that. The year 2022 when we went to the Super Bowl, yo, he had a hell of a year. Yeah, in the Super Bowl, he shit the bed. But so did John Gannon. So did, so did that special teams. You know what I'm saying? So, look, it is what it is. But as for now, he's like number two on the roster as a safety, like number two or number three, especially with Sidney Brown going down. Um, you know, so we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of rotation there. We don't have a lot of depth. So, you know, what are we going to do? And then the reports just rolled out that Vic said that he, he pumping the brakes, pumping the brakes on putting him at safety. And I agree with that because, and I've been agree with that, you know, that we probably shouldn't put him there because he, because we, from, to go from corner to safety and be successful, you have to be elite. You have to be some of those players who get gold jackets, Hall of Fame style player. And James Bradbury is not that. You know, so I'm not sure what we're going to do there. I'm going to definitely keep you up to date on that. 
Milton Williams, a guy who's ready to make the next step, who we trust, you know, who has flashes last year, you know, bar the injuries. But I think that he's ready to make the next step. He's going to have himself an outstanding season. Um, also in camp, we've learned that Jake the Make is back to doing Jake the Make things, man. He's making quality, quality field goals. Um, y'all in trouble again, man, because we're going to win again from the leg of Jake the Make, and y'all going to be upset. Y'all going to be upset. But look, man, that's all for today's episode. But for now, yeah, I got some diamonds on me, diamonds on me dancing, looking like they prancing. Always on my bi, we talking about expansion. Looking at a mansion, open up the benches, hanging off the blicket, empty out the sticket, shooting like I'm jamming. Chip wood, this good. Sorry that I'm this hood. Real quick, man, I want to talk about a video that I seen on X today. Um, YouTuber Ego Owl posted the video, but the video credit came from. Um, Baldy at Baldy NFL on X. Make sure you go follow both of those guys. But basically what I'm seeing here, man, is Huff gained a step on Lane, you know, but the long arms allow Lane to recover more effectively. Basically pushing the defender wide to, you know, protect the quarterback, open up a lane for Jalen Hurts. You know, it wasn't nobody coming around on a stunt or nothing like that to, to hit Jalen Hurts. So he was able to step up and make the throw. But in my opinion, this is exactly how Lane Johnson won that rep. This is Lane Johnson we're talking about right here. The dude is a phenom, a really great player. You know what I'm saying? So, look, man, great rap by the both of those guys. You know, I would love to see um, Huff keep fighting. Can't wait to see, you know, what we get out of him uh, this upcoming season. You know, most tackles in this league, that probably would have ended up in the sack or at least a pressure on the quarterback. But, look, man, how to out.